This is a video about mutable instruments, frames. One of the things that makes frames an interesting module is that it combines pieces that you're probably already familiar with, but allows you to control them and manipulate them with this large knob in the middle. Let's start by acquainting ourselves with the basics of the module. First and foremost, frames is a four channel module. Each channel has an attenuation knob, a dedicated input, and a dedicated output. In addition to individual ins and outs for each channel, there's also a one to four multiple input and a four to one mixer output. Starting with some basics, let's look at this area down here. For each of the channels, we can put a signal in and we'll get it out. So I'm gonna patch in this sine wave here I'm going to put it on channel 1, and I'm going to take that same channel output, put that into the oscilloscope. Now you'll notice straight away that nothing is happening. For each of the channels, there's an attenuation knob that in the default state of frames will clamp that value. Right now you can see that attenuation is totally off because the LED is completely extinguished. If we bring up attenuation, you can see over here on the oscilloscope, we have the sine wave that we sent in coming out with nothing changed on it. Adjusting the knob allows us to attenuate that value. So out of the box, one of the first things that you can use frames for is a four channel attenuator. Another of frames use case is you can add an input to the all input right here that will copy the signal out to all four channels. So likewise here you can see we're taking the output of channel 1 and even though nothing is directly inputting into channel 1 we're bringing it into the all and that value is copied out. And the attenuation here still applies. If we were to turn the attenuation on all of the channels all the way up we can now use frames as a 1 to 4 multiplier where each channel is going to receive a copy of the same input signal. Similarly, something that a multiplier typically can't do is we can individually attenuate these channels. So now 3 is at half value, but 1, 2, and 4 are still at their full value. Another use for frames is treating it as a manual mixer because you have four channels and four attenuation knobs if you're running audio through it these attenuation knobs are basically going to act as volume controls and we can we can use it as a manual mixer so I'm going to grab the output of uh, two oscillators here I'll bring it in on channel three and four of frames and then I'll take the mix output and bring that into the filter uh, and so now it works pretty much like you'd expect we can you know mix those audio signals however we see fit now is probably also a pretty good time to talk about this knob this big knob here the big knob is what sets frames apart from just a four channel attenuator or a four channel malt or mixer the way that this knob works is, first of all, it's fixed. You can see as I pull the knob down, there's a, there's a hard stop there, and there's a hard stop on the other side. What you can do is you can add a point anywhere along that arc that the knob spins, and you can do so with these buttons here. So press Add, and you see that two things happened. First of all, the LED lit up, and second of all, the knob turned to color we can delete it likewise with the delete button there. Each time you add a frame you get a random color on the knob. And as we turn the knob we can add other frames wherever we would like them. When you have a frame you can set an attenuation value for that frame and frames will remember that value at that point. As you move the knob what happens is it will interpolate between whatever the frames were that you set. So let me do an example. We've got, we've got a frame down here. Let's bring up channel 3. I'll add a second frame. 
maybe over there. We'll take channel three down and we'll bring channel four up. So frames at this point, as you can see from the status LEDs over here on the attenuation knobs, frames is interpolating between those values that we set and we can manually scrub between them. So in this case, we've created a, a crossfader. Something else that we can use frames for is for uh, panning, stereo panning. So in this instance, uh, let's take the audio out of one of our oscillators. I'm going to pull it into N and I'm going to take channel 1. This will represent left audio and then channel 2 here will represent uh, right audio. And we can basically do something uh, really similar to what we just did with the crossfading in that if I add a frame and uh, let's say We'll start out with an equal mix of the two. I can add another frame up here where I bring up the left channel and I bring down the right channel. I can add yet another frame over here where I take out the left channel and bring up the right channel. You should be able to hear that if you're listening in stereo, that we're panning left and right. Yet more than we can do with frames, because frames will do a 10 volt out, it'll act as a CV source, we could use it as a sequencer, where each frame is one of our steps and we can manually advance the position of those steps. Now one of the interesting things about this is that a lot of sequencers will lock you into a fixed rhythm interval or a grid, which of course you could defeat with a clock, but in this case with frames, because we can put a keyframe wherever we want, we can control the rhythm of the sequence. So for uh, this demo, I'm going to use channel 4 and I'm going to send it into microscale, which is a quantizer. We'll take the quantized output and we'll route that into one of our oscillators. And then we'll take the output of an oscillator and send it through the normal signal path with a filter. Okay, so now as we add control voltage on, well, we're going to be using channel 4 here, it will change the quantized pitch. So using that, we can uh, make a little bit of a sequence. So I'll start uh, this, this quantizer set for G major. So we'll start on G and add another note here. So there we have a little bit of a sequence and we can uh, manually scrub through it. We know that if we always go back to the bottom here, we're gonna hit the tonic. So that alone is kind of neat, but we haven't talked a whole lot about uh, this knob here. 
So in addition to being able to move between these frames manually using the big knob, you can also use a control voltage to have frames move it for you. So uh, here on PAMS, this uh, channel one, you can see it's a fairly slow triangle wave. Well, maybe that's more of a sine wave. Regardless, it's slow. If we patch that into frame, one of the things is you notice uh, the quantizer is not moving, our pitch isn't moving. This modulation knob here affects how much of this control voltage will move the position of our frames. So if we bring it up, now we've turned frames into a basic sequencer. What's cool, of course, is you have four channels. So if you have more than one quantizer, you could do chords or different melodies that have different rhythms and layer them over top of each other. And if at any time you wanted to stop it automatically playing and advance it yourself, you could. You could go backwards. And so on. One last use case of frames that I wanted to mention is that because this knob is effectively a timeline and you can put as many dots as you want, it's actually, it's not as many as you want, it's like 20, but it's quite a lot. It's probably more than you could fit dots on here. Because you can put them wherever you want, again, it's up to your creativity as to how you can use this. So an interesting thing we can do is we can use frames as an envelope, either a manually advanced envelope or an automatic envelope. So if you think about what an envelope is, let's, let's think about an ADSR envelope. We have the attack phase in which we go from nothing to everything, and then the decay. We might decrease from that everything to something slightly less. We'll hold at that value for sustain, and then we'll drop that value down for release. We could, we could basically recreate that here with frames. So I can add a keyframe as the start of our envelope. That's where we're starting with nothing. Maybe we'll have a short attack phase. So I'll add a frame for attack, and I'll bring attenuation all the way up. We'll have a longer decay phase. We'll add a keyframe for that, and maybe bring decay down to about half. We'll have a decent sustain. We'll add a keyframe to end our sustain. And then finally, at the very end, we'll have a short release. To have a look in the oscilloscope, what that actually looks like. All right, so over here you can see as I manually advance the knob, we get something that kind of looks like uh, an envelope. I think my drawing could have been a little bit better, but you get the idea. So of course, we could use that. We could actually use that with a VCA, and we could manually open and close the VCA for an oscillator. And of course, as I've talked about before, we can also add keyframe modulation. So if you watch the shape here, you can see that we have a backwards envelope that then goes into the forwards envelope. The reason why is because the modulation here is being controlled by the shape of the wave that we're sending to control it. So if we look at what that shape is that we're controlling it with, you can see it's a triangle, which is as frames receives a voltage up to five volts, it will move positively because we have positive modulation set. It means it'll rotate that way. And as the value goes down, it will of course do the opposite. If we only wanted the envelope to play in one direction, we could control which direction it plays in by specifying different shapes of control voltages on the frame in. Let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so here I'm gonna bring in a reverse saw type shape. You can see this wave instantly rises up and then slowly fades down. Now if you recall, what that means is that because it instantly rises up, we will instantly jump to the very end of our timeline 
and then that ramp downwards means that we're going to slowly go back that way. In other words, with a reverse saw, we're going to play frames in reverse. And so sure enough here you can see we're getting kind of that reverse envelope shape going on. Now likewise, if we were to switch the type of wave that we are using to play frames with, and we have a regular saw, it's going to slowly ramp up and then drop down. That means we're going to play frames all the way forward, and then it'll instantly jerk back to the start. This allows us to not repeat that. So as you think about ways that you're creating frames and attenuating them, if you plan to modulate the movement of the frames, the wave that you choose is an important one. It will allow you to have different ways of playing that back. All right, well, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful and interesting, and maybe you decide that frames is the module for your rack. Until next time.